This is the new Renault Zoe, and it's just had a pretty major overhaul. The main focus has been on increasing the battery capacity, improving the Zoe's range from 186 miles to 245 miles. And in this review, we're going to tell you exactly how far it will really go in real world driving conditions. There's also a choice of two motors. We've got the old 109 brake horsepower R110 from before, but also a new 134 brake horsepower R135. And that's the one we've got here today. There's a very subtle tweak to its design. These lights at the back look quite cool. There's a few more lines around the car than there were before, as well as a new front bumper, new standard LED headlights too. But it's the same body panels from before and it's the same underpinnings too. The pricing is also different and to save more than 1,500 pounds on the new Renault Zoe, go to whatcar.com right now. Well, after you've watched the video. Now, if you're feeling slightly underwhelmed by the exterior changes to the Zoe, then don't worry because inside it's had a much more significant overhaul. Now, remember the original Zoe was about as upmarket inside as an oven, but now you can just see looking at it, it's so much nicer. And also the materials have had a real boost in quality. So soft touch materials on the dash. You've also got recycled fabric on plusher trim levels on the dash and on the door. And it just looks so much nicer. Even this kind of cheaper, harder plastics around the gear selector don't really look or feel that bad. So it's really good in the interior, a big step forward. Similarly, you've now got new infotainment. Play models get a seven inch touchscreen. GT line gets 9.3 inch screen. And it's not the best system on the market, but it's significantly better than before. And you also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard and the icons to switch between the menus are nice and big, so it should be pretty easy to use on the move. Underneath the infotainment screen, you've got these nice piano key style buttons, and below that, you still have physical aircon dials, and that is great that you've got physical controls for them rather than them being hidden awkwardly within the touchscreen. Another great thing about the new Zoe is that every model as standard gets a fully customizable 10 inch digital driver display as standard. And it shows you things like your speed and also if you've got the sat nav lined up on the infotainment, it'll give you turn by turn navigation as well. However, while this is all a big improvement on the old Zoe, one annoyance remains and that's the driving position. So just like the old car, it feels like you're really perched on top of it, kind of like a bus driver position. So that isn't necessarily great, doesn't make it feel necessarily that sporty, but you do at least get a good range of adjustment in the steering wheel, although there's no height adjustment in the seat, so you can't really do anything about that feeling of being pretty high up, even though you're in quite a small car. But otherwise, there's absolutely no problems with the space up front. There's a good amount of headroom, legroom is decent, and there's some storage options too some wireless phone charging just underneath the gear selector here, which is nicely designed, as well as a couple of cup holders back here and another kind of tray at the front. And also on the passenger side, you've got this handy place to stick your phone as well as a couple of door bins, of course. Now, tall adults in the back will feel a little squeezed for headroom and legroom isn't particularly impressive either. So obviously bigger cars like the Volkswagen e-Golf and the Kia e-Niro are more accommodating for adults in the back, but still, it's not too bad in the back of the Zoe. And also I quite like this interesting design in the roof lining too. In the old Zoe, the rear seat backs folded in one big clumsy piece, but they now thankfully have the more convenient 60-40 split you get in most small cars. The battery might have a larger capacity, but it doesn't take up any extra space, which is good news for the boot because it still has the same physical dimensions from before, which means it's roughly the same size as a Volkswagen e-Golf. But you can see if you go for the upgraded Bose stereo, then you have this awkward thing in the boot floor there. And also by the time you've chucked your charging cables in the back, then it begins to look not quite so practical, but there's still enough space for a big weekly shop. And also for reference, we managed to fit six cabin size suitcases into the boot of the Zoe. But how expensive is it and how far will it really go on a full charge? These are the key things you need to know about buying and owning the new Renault Zoe. Renault says the new Zoe will go 233 miles in summer conditions and 149 miles in winter. We conducted a real range test in a controlled environment and recorded a very respectable result of 192 miles. That is less than the more expensive Kia e-Niro, but it's also considerably more than cheaper, small electric car rivals like the Seat Me Electric. 
If you buy a Zoe, Renault will install a seven kilowatt wall box at your home for free, which is nice. And once you get it, you'll be able to charge the Zoe from empty to full in around nine hours and 25 minutes. What isn't so nice is the fact that you've got to spend 750 pounds to plug the Zoe into a CCS rapid charger. Once you do though, you'll be able to get a 0 to 80% top up in around 40 minutes at a rate of 50 kilowatts. Without that, the best rate you'll get is 22 kilowatts and that will go from 0 to 100% in around three hours. You've also got to spend more if you want to be able to charge the Zoe through a three pin plug. As you'd expect, the Zoe is substantially more expensive to buy than conventionally powered rivals like the Ford Fiesta, but in electric car terms, it's pretty good value. Compared to electric rivals like the Kia e-Niro, Nissan Leaf and Volkswagen e-Golf, the Zoe undercuts them. But the electric MG ZS is cheaper. And don't forget, in the UK, you can get £3,500 towards the cost of your new electric car, thanks to a grant from the government. It's worth pointing out that you used to be able to buy just the Zoe and then lease the battery separately, but that isn't an option anymore. Renault doesn't have a great record when it comes to reliability. It came second bottom in our latest reliability survey, with only Land Rover below it. But every new Renault does come with a five-year warranty with no mileage limit for the first two years, but a 100,000 mile limit after that. Renault also provides three years or 100,000 miles of roadside assistance cover on all of its electric cars. As for the battery, that's covered by a separate eight-year warranty. The Zoe was rated five stars out of five for safety by experts Euro NCAP. However, that test was back in 2013, and since then, the testing criteria has become far more stringent. Although, the new Zoe should still score highly. It is a shame that you've got to go for range-topping GT line before you get automatic emergency braking as standard. When it comes to choosing between the trims, it depends what motor you want to go for. We'd recommend going for at least iconic trim so you can add AEB as an option, but that's only available with the R110. If you want the more powerful R135, then you need to go for range topping GT line, but you do at least get AEB as standard. But when it comes to picking between those two motors, which one should you go for? Well, truth be told, the R135, the stronger one, which is the one that we're driving now, even that doesn't really offer Tesla levels of electric car performance. So it's punchy off the line and it will keep up with motorway traffic and it's also noticeably quicker than the R110 but it still doesn't really pin you back in your seat like some other electric cars do. No matter what Zoe you go for, you get regenerative braking. So when you lift off the accelerator pedal, the car will slow itself down and it uses the energy harvested from that to help replenish the battery. And in the Zoe, you can, on the gear selector, put it in B mode and that strengthens the impact of that. So when you lift off, it's more noticeably slowing down and it does mean that effectively you can travel for long parts of your journey using just one pedal if you judge your stopping distance correctly and obviously don't crash accidentally into anything in front of you. And it does make it very relaxing. It's a feature that other electric cars offer, so it's good that the Zoe has it too. And generally it is a pretty relaxing car to drive. So the steering is impressive compared to other electric cars in this price bracket. So certainly compared to an MG ZS electric, the Zoe is just much more accurate precise and gives you a better sense of connection to the front wheels and really for the type of driving that you're going to be doing in the Renault Zoe it's comfortable relaxing and very nice the ride does slightly let things down occasionally because when you're going over coarse surfaces you get a bit of a shudder through the body although the Zoe is good at dealing with bigger road imperfections so like potholes or going over speed bumps like that it does actually absorb the impact quite well and the body is nicely controlled in those instances so overall it's pretty good and then when you do get on the motorway there's really no issues with the ride it nicely flattens out and it's comfortable it's quiet inside here too there is a bit of tire noise but it's still a relaxing impressive electric car to drive The new Renault Zoe might not look that different from its predecessor, but it's undoubtedly a better car. A much nicer interior, longer range, and a better driving experience, it's a big step forward. In fact, right now, it's the best small electric car that you can buy. And if you do want to buy one, make sure you go to whatcar.com to get the best deal. If you've enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you gave it a like. Any questions at all about the car, leave a comment below, and make sure that you're subscribed to our channel because we've got loads of videos just like this coming out every week.